also, no. Atheists just eat breakfast. We don't <laughs> say atheist grace before we fucking do it. We just eat food. Uh, uh, up, 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 everybody, sorry. Nothing. Okay, go. there we go. <laughs> okay, now you can eat. <laughs> if everyone would please turn to me and thank me for preparing this meal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So. All right. Now you can eat. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because you can't physically go fuck yourself, and this is the next closest thing. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting. <laughs> you can try. Well, you can, and I, I'm sure we all have. But then we had to settle. for I got Washington. real close to the promised Christian. land a few times. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting <laughs> 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Ow, I hurt myself. Sorry, you guys go. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. <laughs> Somebody else go. And, uh, I can say all it. right. Sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. And if anyone had ever fucked themselves, it would have been this guy. Still hasn't actually technically happened. <laughs> Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Fantastic. No, it's all about that reverse plow. You got to nope. do the reverse <laughs> plow. <laughs> Too many people go for the regular plow. It's the reverse <laughs> plow. Wait, you, you you curl yourself backwards like a scorpion? Exactly. Like you're putting like yes. tape to tape mm -hmm. to make the tape loop? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I got to feel like we're the only people that reviewed this movie that started this way. So it's nice to know we're putting something original out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing some yoga together yeah. at Christmas. Hell yeah, we Absolutely. Are. Yeah. All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched... Wish for Christmas. It's the extremely depressing and also wildly offensive story of what happens when you go from Christianity to atheism and back again. So basically, it's the life of Joey Lawrence, who is in this movie. Get excited. You, like you're a wholesome child star singing on Carson. Then you're on Blossom and you make money, which means you become an evil atheist because, you know, Gainful employment mm -hmm. equals evil atheist. Yep, yep. Then you run out of money and do terrible Christian stuff again with Melissa Joan Hart. And <laughs> then you become a Chippendales dancer in Vegas for a few weeks. You do. Then you make this movie. Then you go bankrupt. So <laughs> that's his story. It's very similar. God provides. <laughs> chapter 11 protection. God provides. <laughs> chapter 11 protection. And Eli. How bad was this movie? Well, if you loved It's a Wonderful Life, but you hated that the title didn't end, but just for us, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this movie. If you've ever yelled, non under my roof you won't through a locked bedroom door, this is the Christmas <laughs> movie for you, let me tell you. <laughs> mm. All right, I will say, this is my favorite, like, one-sentence plot in the history of this show, right? Like, this is one that I'm like, I'm looking forward to telling people, oh no, I watched a movie where the plot was this film. <laughs> this, yeah. Which is that a girl, it's a liar, liar, basically, except that the girl wishes her parents didn't believe in God. <laughs> and we get to see what that does to a person <laughs> through the eyes of a Christian filmmaker. Yeah, we get to see what the folks at Pure <laughs> Flix think atheists are like. Yes. And way wealthier than we are, by the way. That's significant. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things, but uh, not the only one. Okay. Is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going with best worst commercial for Pure Flix. <laughs> yes. It's not yes. in the movie. <laughs> yeah. It's the first thing before the movie. So we're going to talk about it in a second, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's David A.R. White trying to sell everyone on a lifetime membership to Pure Flix. <laughs> but here's the thing with this. If you have to refresh 
the Pure Flix tab on your browser, it makes you watch that same fucking ad again. Oh, and you no. can't fast forward. So I had to watch this ad fucking 19 <laughs> times oh, no. because Pure Flix has a goddamn Amish guy with a butter churn running their servers. So I had to refresh all the fucking time. I got so goddamn angry. Oh, no. oh I was yelling at the screen by myself. <laughs> for a bunch of last night. Like, you know, when you get crazy and you like cry into a mirror, I was doing that. <laughs> Dude, I just uh, quit smoking. Yes. Uh, yes, I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. All right. And believe it or not, we have more to say about that commercial to come. <laughs> All yes, right. we do. I was going to go with best worst movie poster facial expressions. <laughs> right, device. So dumb. Oh my! You can just look at them, and you're like, "Oh, dumb people." Yeah, They're right. All dumb. No, yeah, exactly. You look at this fucking movie. If if you rented this back in the old days when you like had to look at a box and shit and see that, like this movie, like mo the 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 facial expressions tell you everything that you needed to know to put it the fuck back. Right, the, and, and you can divide it like right down the middle because the people on the right, one of them's Joey Lawrence, and the other one's the the star of the Whoa. movie. Well, yeah, was Joey Lawrence, and they look like movie people on their side of the poster. But then on the left, you've got Bill Engvall and the this other lady <laughs> looking like so good. It's like the senior trip picture where they're pretending to be sober because they know their mom's going to see this on Facebook. <laughs> like, like It's one of those things like if you take a picture of your spouse and they're making the face that this lady is making on this poster, you show it to them discreetly and you're like, you know, we're going to do this again, right? You know, And they're like, oh, yeah, thank God. Yeah, because you love them. <laughs> also, this poster is strong, strong evidence that there has never been a photograph of Bill Engvall with his eyes open, right? Because <laughs> if there were one in existence, you would supplant it onto this poster. <laughs> but since we can only conclude it does not exist, <laughs> he's stuck with this one. Definitely somebody just did that, like, white power sign below the waist and got punched <laughs> in the dick or whatever the stupid game is. They're laughing about it. All right. And of course, I went for the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst depiction of atheists. Look, this movie's entire purpose is to make us seem villainous. And the major defining characteristics that they will give these characters when they turn atheist is generosity to their daughter and knowing how mortgages work. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. They try so hard and fail to make us look douchey. And they do it in like the most bigoted possible way, but still they fail. They do. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we're about to revisit whatever happened to Joey Lawrence. And Eli needs a minute to prepare for that emotionally. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the failure to think of any advantages at all to being Christian. That is wish for Christmas. It's not a wish, by the way. They couldn't wish get the rights to the indefinite article. It's couldn't, just yeah. wish for Christmas. <laughs> a wish for Christmas is a much better movie much with better. Lacey Chabert. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Missed out. <laughs> Gretchen Wiener. Hey, podcast listener. Do you like our shows? Do you have an impossible to shop for gam fan in your life? Well, then why not get them tickets to God Awful Movies live in Los Angeles, February 15th? Namaste. That's the sound L.A. makes. We'll be at the Hudson Theater on Santa Monica Boulevard. But don't wait to check the show notes for this episode for the link to buy tickets. There are only 99 seats, and we're gonna sell them all. God-awful movies live in L.A. because we're tired of eating tacos not from a truck. Delicious. And so then I yell, I would die for my God, right into the mic. Awesome. You show that town hall. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Guys. Nice. Um, hey, guys. Hey, Steve. What's uh, what's up? Well, I just got some really bad news about the movie that we wrote, the oh. Jew for Christmas. Oh, you, you mean the one where, where the girl wants to go to the winter ball, so... She wishes her family was Jewish. Right. But then she realizes now that they're Jewish, they're they're total jerks. Dude, Dave, language. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's that's the one. Well, apparently, according to the guys upstairs, it's too on the nose. 
Oh, yeah, because it's about how not being Christian turns you evil? Well, no, no. I mean, Act 2 is literally about how their noses are getting bigger. That's true. Oh, <laughs> they do. Yeah, that was, we, did, we wrote yeah, that well, in. They well, they, it was funny. But anyway, they, no, but they, we need to change it now. Oh, all right. Um, I mean, is there like a, a group we can villainize with no consequences, maybe? Yeah. Atheists. Mexicans. What? Atheists. Yep. Good. We all said atheists. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. But before we start the movie, David A.R. White would like to have a word with us. <laughs> <laughs> he comes on. And I honestly, I expected him to go, you know, look, Eli, Heath, Noah, I know it's you guys. It's just you guys at this point, okay? Can we stop <laughs> with the fucking charade here? Please? Tell you what, you do a lifetime membership to our podcast, and we'll do a lifetime <laughs> membership to Netflix, and we'll see who works out better. <laughs> so Patreon works for a lot of folks. I wrote in my notes, we're offering a lifetime membership because everything is fine. It's actually better than fine. We're not... <laughs> Desperately cash strapped and hoping your grandma can't do math. We're doing great. Look how wide yeah. our eyes are. <laughs> Don't answer now, though. But uh, we're just saying you might not be able to give us a thousand dollars soon. Yeah, most right, of you, right? Yeah, exactly. He's Act like now while supplies last of zeros and ones. We're a streaming <laughs> service. This is a weird pitch. He's like, hi, I'm David A. R. White. You know, blow is more expensive than you realize at the time. In, in the moment, it's just, you know, it's the just party, you're getting machine. some for everybody. It's just your bin, you know. It's a, <laughs> also, like, I was disturbed. I, I was slightly disturbed and then really disturbed when I found out why. But I was slightly disturbed when David A.R. White referred to buying a $1,000 lifetime membership to their streaming service as a donation. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, I mean, that's But why is selling, that, yeah. Noah? But why? Why can you call it a donation? As I learned literally seconds before this record, Peerflix, this streaming service that's selling a religion, is a 501c3? <laughs> yeah, it is. God damn it. And look, I didn't get a chance to do the research, but that means somewhere legally I can look up how much Peerflix pays people and that is is a segment of this show all of its own. <laughs> God awful foyas. Yeah, right. it is. <laughs> all right, yeah. We'll revisit that sometime <laughs> soon. Perhaps Give us a call, Washington a, Post. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, perhaps we've got a, a new segment on the uh, Scathing Atheist called How the Hell Is This a Charity or something. But anyway... <laughs> Oh, that's great. Oh, I love yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think we may just have a new 2020 segment <laughs> Episode there. one, Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to open the movie proper on shots of a bucolic New England town in early winter. Of course, the first thing that comes up after the logos and shit is Joey Lawrence's name. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's what I got for Christmas. Here we go. Pure flicks for when the cucks at Hallmark won't stand their ground. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is Mustard Seed Entertainment yep. who made this one, too, by the way. We, we've watched a, one or two of their movies already. Yeah, uh -huh. Catching um, Faith was theirs. Yeah. Little Boy. Yeah, right, right. That was like way early on. We did that one. But just title wise, maybe don't bring that up. The thing that <laughs> God... Got wrong. So he couldn't size <laughs> seeds. Yep. The, the omnipotent, omniscient God of the universe couldn't be like, orchid seed, mustard seed, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. Yeah. I'm an idiot. She says, also, by the way, the credits reveal that Bill Engvall will be in this one. The man who literally dreams of Jeff Foxworthy success will be in this one. <laughs> man, if only there'd been some kind of sign of where Bill Engvall's career was going. <laughs> given to him. Oh, God. And we're getting that weird kind of Hallmarky music here. But yeah, but what they can quite. afford. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, I'm a Christmas elf and I'm not stalking you music is what I'm hearing. <laughs> so, all right. So now we're, yeah, you are. we're in a church and damn it, if we're not 
texting, right? So we're, we're focused on a group of teenage girls who are not taking church as seriously <laughs> as they should be. Oh, they were fucking blown away by this level of technology at Pure Flix. They were like, wait, the phone goes on the screen? You're a fucking wizard. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so we, we're reading the chicks' texts. They're all very excited about the winter ball. We also meet the hip pastor uncle here who is giving this sermon that's trying to sound cool, but he's just like, but but the message literally is, you know, Christmas is awesome, but that's just a taste of how awesome the end of the world's going to be. Yes. <laughs> okay, sure. We all like Christmas stockings, but imagine emptying out the four bulls of the apocalypse. Am <laughs> yes, I right? That's his fucking sermon. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The whole time I just wanted somebody to get up and be like, we should pay taxes and help poor people. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> this is so long. Instead of the magic candles, let's do a thing. God damn it. Yeah. Nobody ever does that at church. No. I hope people do that at church once in a while. Yeah, but yeah, right, right. But then they ask me to leave. Just so. once. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so the main character, this is Anna. Anna is a 17-year-old. We're going to say older than 17-year-old actor so that some of my notes later are more comfortable for well, everyone. Involved, all of but, these actors are 50 something yeah, yeah. and they're supposed to be in high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I exactly. was going to say, Noah, don't worry about it. The crow's feet next to her eyes say older than <laughs> yeah. 17 year old actor. Did know. But yeah, but she's a teenager for the purposes of this movie and she has to light the first uh, Jesus candle. Oh, and there's so much angry miming around lighting this Jesus candle. Buster <laughs> Keaton would have shouted from the back, little much guys, little much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the church service is over. We go outside, and this is where we meet her parents, good guy lawyers who won't take money from big evil banks. <laughs> they exclusively work <laughs> pro bono. I wrote in my notes, well, then you're not technically lawyers, are you? For yeah, a right. Living. No, like, it's like when you want uh, a photographer for your wedding, you, you go with the guy who says, no, I don't, I never charge for my stuff. Yeah, right. That must, yeah. You must be I such. I can do pro bono lawyer work whenever I want. I can do it too. I'm doing it right now. But yeah, the bank is trying to get them to like join the bank side on some foreclosures. Oh, my God. And as soon as I found out that Joey Lawrence was going to be a lawyer, I got real excited because I was like, he's going to have to say fucking lawyer words throughout this movie. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> he never will, by the way. They, they, no. they, they nope. know better than to try to get him doing Latin, you know? <laughs> they tried to get him to do one Latin word, and it was like a day of takes. And they're like, okay. <laughs> you just stick with whoa. That was a great catchphrase. That's awesome. All right. Build a career around it. So the, the pastor guy comes out. Now, we, we establish here that the pastor is her uncle. Now, there's not really a reason for this, except that the pastor dude is fucking hot. He really and is. And later on in the movie, it won't make sense that her and the pastor aren't fucking mm -hmm. if he's not her uncle. Right? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, he looks like a he's kind of like a Tom Hardy, but gentle kind of a look. Mm, yes. this guy, yeah, he totally, yeah. yeah, he totally did it for me. Anyway, yeah. So did, I got to be honest. So did Joey Lawrence. He's looking good. Interesting. Yeah, he's no, had yeah. some uh, rough times, but he's looking good. Yeah, he's still, yeah, he's still got the looks. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. For when you want a Kirk Cameron with more pain in his eyes. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like I said, he's looking good. <laughs> so the next day, we've got him getting, having breakfast. Dad's getting ready for court. And so that he won't have to say any lawyer words, he just asks about his tie. He has this plain red tie that he he walks to his wife and he's like, is this plain red tie too wacky? Am I getting fucking crazy up in here? <laughs> Does this tie take attention away from the Lord? I need to know right now. <laughs> I was so mad, too. Like, really? we're st It's just right at the beginning of the movie and we're talking about fucking ties. It's like small talk, the movie. Yeah. Fuck. Yes. <laughs> Watching a movie about talking to normies. God. <laughs> and then as though that's not bad enough, right? Like the girl walks in, Anna walks in, and mom is like, no, you can't wear that to school. I can see your shoulders. Now, keep in mind, shoulders, ankles, like objectively, that's just as fucking stupid, right? Like both of those <laughs> things are equally fucking stupid. But from in the world of this movie, like the, the girl walked in in, those, uh, in, in that little tank top, 
outfit and all of the viewers of this film were like, oh, I would never let my daughter. Oh, OK. She's going to make a put on a sweater. OK. All, all right, right. Thank goodness. Yeah. I almost asked for a refund for my lifetime membership. <laughs> Because I was getting the palpitations of that young girl's clavicle. It's okay, though. Oh, I didn't even understand what was happening here. So she came down and the parents somehow indicated that the outfit was no good. Like, I just saw the daughter walk downstairs, yell, and run out as if, like, maybe his tie was like the same color as like it was going to clash and they looked dumb dude that is ex you saw what happened right the editing on this was so fucking bad that i had to piece that together in retrospect yeah absolutely my note was why is she mad about the tie it, maybe it is too loud <laughs> <laughs> okay because she's wearing like just clothing yes right? yeah like, right there was nothing exactly. crazy about exactly it's just, you could just see her shoulders. That's it. That's it. So, okay. So she sits down to, to breakfast. They have this conversation where she's basically just skating as close as she possibly can to saying, yeah, I'm going to fuck everybody and come men, women, whoever pretty much wants to. I'll do three ways, five ways. I'm going to try a lot of shit that, but that, that they get as close to that as they can. Right. Yeah, I think it's so close. She's like, well, I'll have you know that you still live with us for the rest of the year. And she's like, cool. I wish you were dead. Uh, set <laughs> on the Lord. I wish you were dead set on the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> like I am. Mom. And they, they have this dynamic thing where she's texting and her parents, because they're just good Christians. They just want to spend some family time with her. So she puts her phone down. The second she puts her phone down, they're like, OK, Jesus. Yeah, they do their pre praying prayer. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So mom says, hey, put down your phone so we can spend some time together. She's like, OK, fine. And then she says, let me read some Jesus shit and then do a fucking canned prayer. It's like, well, then, no, just let her be on her goddamn phone. She she literally goes to pick her phone up after the Jesus quote. And she goes, we haven't prayed yet. And I wrote in my notes, you see, that was the pre praying talking about Jesus. <laughs> These are like the hobbits, but with the Lord instead of meals. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so she goes to school. This is where we meet her crush, Colton. Who is 43 years old. Oh, my God, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he asks her to the ball by offering her a carnation. Right? <laughs> it's so cheap and shitty. And the movie <laughs> wants us to feel bad for Colton because she's like, she wanted one red rose. And we're supposed to go, ooh, what a spoiled brat. But carnations look like something a clown shits in a cartoon. <laughs> so the, even the movie can't be like, that's mm, yum. I always I, wished my flowers were furrier. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this is just, it's a throwaway line, but I loved it so much. After she says, yes, she'll go to the ball with him. He says, all right, I'll see you in science, which is a class that... <laughs> Teachers in high school take science. <laughs> so, I'll see you in ology of uh, <laughs> study. You're going to be in learning <laughs> class today? See you in studying <laughs> study class. And also, <laughs> they, they agree to the date, and she says, all right, text me the deets, because they're going to go to the winter ball together. And he's like, what? I'm 43 years old. I have no idea what that word was. Text. What is text? Yeah. She turns to her. Okay, Woomer. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, it's, but she's going to go to the ball with him. She walks off and then she like teams up with her friends. And then we, this is where we realized that they were going for mean girls. Right. Oh, God. I love this so much. It's just a series of cruel, not funny statements followed by echoey 45 <laughs> second silences. They're the best. But they're, they're going full mean girls here. Just directly trying to steal it for this interaction with these three female characters in high school. And at this point, I was just like super duper rooting for a sloppy Lindsay Lohan who found Jesus after rehab to be introduced into the movie. Like, 
I didn't see her name in the credits, but I was like, oh, man, if she's like the next Joey Lawrence. She yeah. belongs in this movie. She's right there. <laughs> yeah. We, we should have a fantasy career death league about <laughs> actors who go full <laughs> Joey. Career death's about to happen for, for Lindsay Lohan. She's right there right. with Joey Lawrence. All right. No, that's a good bet. That's a good bet. She's like a first round. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So and, and, and that's the thing, though, that you have to keep in mind when you're watching these movies. The, the goal here is whatever your kid's favorite movie is, Pure Flix wants to be like, here's a movie like that, but Christian. Right. And that's very clearly what happened. Their, their assignment was make Christian mean girls. Yep. Right. So that's exactly what we're watching here. All right. So and, and speaking of which, now we have to introduce Dork Girl for them to pick on. Now, keep in mind, like. like they have nothing to do with this character, right? They'll, they'll resolve this sort of half ass off screen later, but they pick on Dork Girl because this is supposed to be Mean Girls, not because it fits into the fucking plot, not because it matters. Like, there's no reason for this character to even be a bully. Mm -mm, totally skippable. But when they did it, I just wrote, oh, damn, they're getting a tape. <laughs> <laughs> reasons why? Is that the reason why? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 13 Reasons Why reference. I, I just Dark? throw out okay. the courtesy laugh when he does stuff like that. Jesus. I'm just like, haha, that's probably funny. I don't know. Oh, it <laughs> is. Ask the people. <laughs> cool reference. People, Bravo. People are loving Bravo. my three-year-old 13 Reasons Why jokes. Let me tell you <laughs> so, right now. They're awesome. rolling. Rolling. <laughs> All right. So now we check in with mom and dad at work at their Christian law firm. Right. <laughs> Where they literally answer the phone, bringing the light of Jesus to the law or whatever. Hey, <laughs> honestly, I wish more Christian lawyers would do that because that would let anyone who just wanted legal advice know to hang up the phone. Yeah, right. Oh, is, you're a hate group. Cool. You're, you're definitely a hate group. <laughs> yes. You answered the phone, bringing light to the law. This is the Jesus law firm or whatever the fuck. The McLaren <laughs> law firm of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And so immediately I was like, oh. Great. So, like, we're going to get them, uh, the fighting against the SPLC at some point. Like, this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'm sure that's what they're thinking about for the sequel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to get, like, a Matt Staver ex machina at the end of the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, they, this is amazing to me, right? Because they have to try to establish that these, these two sure are thoughtful employers to their secretary, but they can't do it because these people aren't thoughtful and don't really know what that would look like. Right. So they come, the, the secretary says, Hey, you know, I got into an auto accident on my way to work today. I rear ended somebody and I'm in pain and my car is all screwed up. And the way that they try to make them empathetic is that they say, all right, well, I'll drive behind you while you take your car to the shop and then bring you back here to work. Some right. More. <laughs> they don't they don't say like, why don't you take the afternoon off? It sounds that sounds pretty traumatic. We don't really have a lot for you today or anything like that. <laughs> nope. So, but but okay. I'll tell you what, you can take your 15 to drive your car to the repair place. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't even dock you for the time it takes me to drive you yeah. back. <laughs> Merry you Christmas. Go. We're Christians. <laughs> Good thing we're not atheists or none of this would work out for you. <laughs> yeah. By the way, question for you guys. Right at the beginning of this little exchange, though, uh, the secretary, Rebecca, right? Mm -hmm. Her name's Rebecca. Uh -huh. she, she she says, she doesn't say, I had a car accident. She looks at her bosses with a really awkward <laughs> face and says, I had an accident. <laughs> and... So for like several seconds before they explained, I was like, uh, she shat herself and can't move from her chair. She, it's going to explode off of her chair. And she's been sitting there for half an hour waiting for them to th get help. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I really related to this character in that moment. I just want to say. <laughs> How many times have you been stranded somewhere because of something like that? <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why I record from home. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Amazingly enough, that is not the only time this actor will give you reason to think she just shat herself. <laughs> what kind of help would you ask for there? You, like, all right, I need you to set up buckets around the sides yep. of this chair. You want a painter's um, cloth that they can just wrap you and the chair in up to your neck. All right. You tie Listen. a bunch of scrunchies around it, <laughs> and then you just... Get in the shower and turn the water on as hot as you can and tear right. your way out. 
<laughs> it's like putting a goldfish in a new tank. Uh, you wouldn't understand. You had a really specific answer with an analogy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break while Eli does whatever he wants. All right. So meanwhile, back at the school, a blonde friend just learned that the <laughs> winter ball has been moved to Christmas Eve night. <laughs> So Anna, the, the main character, though, she's very upset to learn that the winter ball has been moved to Christmas Eve because she won't be able to go. She has to go to church on Christmas Eve. Her parents would never let her not go to church on Christmas Eve. It's the conflict of the movie, everybody. The conflict of the movie. Well, that's the main conflict. But we also have to introduce <laughs> the conflict between her and her blonde friend over which of them is going to give the big speech at the winter ball. Again, <laughs> and, and again, this is supposed to be Mean Girls, but it is so echoey and hate filled. It's just like, <laughs> so I'm going to be the one giving the speech. Are you doodly doing my murder? I feel like you're doodly <laughs> doing my murder right now. Get out of the doodly do. <laughs> this is throughout. You're not this... in the murder of you. <laughs> doodly do. So, it, like, throughout this entire fucking movie it's just like why would these people hang out with each other <laughs> they they hate each other so goddamn much. <laughs> so much and again <laughs> they're just trying to do bitchy teenagers but they've never related to a young person so it's just it's just their relationships to their teenagers who do hate them so they're like yeah <laughs> believe me i'm aware of teenage sass <laughs> like like when they say i'm moving away and i'll never speak to you again classic Teenage move. <laughs> also, they have no idea what a speech is, apparently. <laughs> oh, God. Because one of the girls describes it like, all right, well, I'm going to do my speech sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> what? The other one's like, oh, well, uh, you're stupid. You're a bitch. I'm going to do a, a mat speech. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, what are you talking about? The finish of your speech visually? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so now it's time to introduce Bill Engvall, a.k.a. Homeless Santa. <laughs> I got to be honest, Bill Engvall is perfect for this part. If yes. anybody already looks like Homeless Santa Claus, he's nailing Bill it. Yeah. My theory is that they just had a scene where she was walking down the street and he happened to be there doing that. Bill Engvall? Is that you? Oh, this guys, we got to get, he's the sign guy. We got to put him in the movie. You give oh, me man. $10 or more, you can fuck me, or you can have this blue collar <laughs> comedy tour Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll be in your movie, sure, yeah. Also, please take this blue comedy collar tour Blu-ray. <laughs> no. <laughs> what if I put a $10 bill inside the case for I'm you? I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> Well, no. but he's he's homeless Santa and he's collecting money for the tin of salvation. Could they not get the rights to the Salvation Army? Is that what happened? I'm sure they couldn't. <laughs> no, apparently not. Yeah. But yeah, she's a bitch. So she throws a tin can in there to which one of the good guys in the movie replies. You know what? Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> <your> face. <laughs> <laughs> But I am keeping it for the nickel. Yeah, I'm no, I'm gonna get yeah, no, this is my can. Fucking nickel, you know, yeah. in Michigan, they'll give you 10 cents. I do like the idea of fucking with the Salvation Army guy. Like, fuck them. That's a terror. They're oh, not yeah, really yeah, a charity. Absolutely. They're a bunch of assholes. Like, I want to start filling that bucket with, like, coupons worth a hundredth of a penny. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, look, no, they have a cash value. It. Go figure it out. It says cash value at the bottom of it. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy. No taxes on that. Congratulations. I haven't even <laughs> chewed that piece of gum yet. You should be happy to get it. That's like that the fucking five of those is worth 25 cents. Yeah. Make sure you don't accidentally give that coupon to a gay person. There you go. <laughs> All right, and then also it's time for us to meet the neighbor who's about to be evicted from his home. Now, they're going to do a whole big analogy, or do, they're going to try for a whole big analogy with the, you know, you put you, if one bulb goes out, the whole string goes out thing, but but modern Christmas lights don't work like that. 
They do not. Nope. So they have to That's like right. insert this line, like they, they clumsily insert this line where uh, they go like, I can't believe they still make these Christmas lights that were outdated 27 years ago. And he's like, yeah, it's very odd that I would own one of these. I'm supposed to be rich. <laughs> but if we were to do an analogy throughout our life, Story that will make sense <laughs> later. <laughs> Establish that now. Be great. Go ahead. What were you saying? Yeah, and 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 this is where Mortgage Guy gets introduced to the movie. Yeah, and gosh, golly, he could use some legal help because he um <laughs> didn't pay his mortgage. <laughs> Look, so good. This is a classic stakes of a shitty movie thing. Oh, the banks for closing on my because of the and they're going to knock over the ski center. Yeah, this movie is so the people who wrote this movie are so stupid that they didn't realize <laughs> that the stakes of that are not. They're taking my house because I stopped paying for it. Stop paying the mortgage. Well, and also yeah. like the usually then the then the stakes would be. I need a bunch of money to catch up on my mortgage, not I need legal advice. You're like <laughs> Legal advice is pay your fucking mortgage. Your mortgage. Also, no. can you ipsum plurum my Netflix <laughs> subscription back? Because <laughs> I, I took one of those credit cards they send you in the mail and then activated it. Then I signed up and then I deactivated it. But they, I want to, I want to finish, nailed it. <laughs> That's what happens. Joey Lawrence is like, oh, don't worry. I'm a lawyer. You're good. I'll just file a uh, we're not paying the mortgage form and you'll be fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'll sprinkle Deal with it, it with Latin and it'll all be fine. <laughs> and OK. And so this neighbor who's about to be evicted, this is Colton's dad. Colton is the love interest that's going to take Anna to the ball. Yeah. And she walks over and the first thing she says to Colton is, Text me. I just wrote in my notes. Text me. What are you, gay? <laughs> <laughs> text me. What do they foreclose on your fucking phone? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Are you guys homeless? But I love this moment, too, because, like, she wanders off and Colton's like, yeah, dad, I didn't tell you. I'm taking Anna to the winter ball. And then right in front of Joey Lawrence, in front of this girl's dad, as this movie would have us believe, he goes, nice. <laughs> really it's the creepiest of nicest right it's not like oh nice it's like nice he might as well say you're gonna hit that you're gonna fucking hit that yes right everything about his tone says are you gonna hit that you got a condom in your wallet good give it to me raw dog <laughs> Start with one, then go to two, and then the Spider-Man, right? Right? Yeah. That's your daughter. Yeah, she loves the Spider-Man. Yep. <laughs> so. All right. So Anna goes to the the law office, right, sometime later to see her parents. This is where we have to introduce that the secretary is a terrible fuck-up and idiot that shouldn't be working in a job as high stakes as legal secretary. This didn't need to be in the movie. There's no point in it. No, I thought that they were trying to set up that Anna was good with computers, but no. <laughs> and, and so she's like, hey, Anna, I'm so glad you're here. I've made a terrible mistake that'll ruin our case against whatever. And I need your help. And they can't even pretend that what Anna does is harder than, oh, OK, so I will hold down control and press Z. Right. Yeah. <laughs> This movie is written by old people who thinks there's an unsend email button. <laughs> that is what she does, doesn't yeah. she? Yes. Um, literally that. She thinks there's a plug-in. Yep. She, Anna's yep. like, oh, I got this. No, no, you just, you download the, the um, magical erasure of the internet plug-in, and then you click on the part of the internet you want to erase, and oh, there it is, the email you just sent, done. That's what they think happens. This movie is about how atheists don't have the ability to love and possibly its most vile and dangerous message is that your niece can unsend your email for you. <laughs> 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 and of course, the moment she downloads the destroy the internet plugin, the secretary goes, thank you, Lord. And we just see the teenager be like, really? Like, I'm yeah, no, right I here. I'm I right here. It was the one that did that. And but because she was so busy helping the secretary, she gets caught wearing slutty shoulderless clothes by mom. 
<laughs> Classic yeah. shenanigans. Jesus. All right, so now we, we have to go back to wacky bum, right? Being disappointed by how much, how little change he's got. The, the, the family's all walking together from the legal office or whatever. And the, the bum is like, man, I didn't get much money today. And Christian dad walks by and he goes, here, homeless person, have $100. Yep. Yeah. Although I loved him. Because at the beginning of this scene, he's just ranting at passers by. I wrote in my notes, yeah, you went to all the trouble of putting on a Santa suit. Why would they not refinance their houses to give you money? <laughs> <laughs> but damn it, if Christian dad won't, right? Oh, and he rubs it in on Anna so hard here. He's like, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, got your can from earlier. Fuck your can. Fuck your can. <laughs> <laughs> I saved the scan for this bit. I assumed I'd see you again. <laughs> Crushed it. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> so a lot of my motivation is going to be revolved around assuming you see you again. So this yeah, is just right. The first time. Right. Rubbing your dad's hundred dollar bill on my dick. How do you like it? How do you like it? <laughs> there you go. Flossing with it. Oh, your Flossing. dad's money. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so we established that her and that homeless Santa sure do hate each other. And then they sit down to dinner to have the very best pizza that that strip mall had to offer. <laughs> oh, God. The it's the saddest pizza. Oh. It's so depressing. <laughs> it's, the, it's the worst. It's the 40 pizzas that Papa John ate. Now we know what it was. We found it. <laughs> oh. Look, Joey Lawrence made a scene at that, like, Hunt Brothers gas station combo <laughs> about the coupon he had for a fill up and a pizza. And that's what he got. Oh, God, it is rough. It was <sighs> awful. And Anna has to say the pre-food prayer, right? She's like, my mom's like, Anna, why don't you pray? And she's like, yes, excellent. I can use this to move the plot along. Um, Dear God, I sure hope my parents won't force me to go to church on Christmas Eve because it conflicts with the winter ball. And it really doesn't fucking matter because I go to church with them every fucking week. And if it was true what they were telling me at church, they wouldn't have to remind me every week. <laughs> Right. Amen. And her parents are like, weird prayer, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but mom and dad are like, oh no, the, the the winter ball is on Christmas Eve. Well, now we can't go as a family. And the daughter's like, can't we just go to the ball and still love Jesus anyway? <laughs> and no, by the way, no, the answer no. to that is no. Not only no. no, but like it's like no is considered a priori by the writers, right? Like they're like, well, obviously you can't do that. That would be terrible and sinful. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't we just like go to a Christmas Eve service in the fucking afternoon or something? No. Jesus Christ didn't die uh, face down in the mud. So we got have a service <laughs> the afternoon on the day before not his birthday, you whore. <laughs> <laughs> and I just have a tiny little note as this scene is going on. The camera starts to pan. Now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get a three shot, but someone explained that to what they were and someone put a gun in their mouth. So instead, the camera just keeps backing away to try and catch all three of them in the frame. In the frame. And it never does, but, no. But it doesn't, and it just looks like the camera is getting bored by the movie. Like it's trying to, it's trying like to it's awkwardly trying room. to leave the room. It's like when your friend got in trouble when you were spending the night with them as a kid kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, so Anna storms off. Uh, quick note on this storming off. They gave this actress too far to stop, and she gets tired <laughs> yeah. mid-shot and has to start again, and it's it's my screensaver because she's like, <laughs> oh, a lot of stairs, a lot of stairs. <laughs> I'm still dejected. You can't tell from my stepping, but I am. And I will start looking like it shortly this time. <laughs> All right. So she goes off to her room, throws herself down on the bed and she wishes she wishes she wishes her parents didn't believe in God. <laughs> that's a that's a strong power move. Praying for atheism. Like that's a good reverse. Yeah, right? like right? yeah, 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 exactly. It's the wishing for more wishes of yeah. Christianity. And yeah. this Christian movie had to admit that that would work. They had to be like, that's prayer. Technically, God would yeah, work it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fuck. 
If it had cut to me, Heath, and you dancing around the house sprinkling atheism powder, I would have forgiven this whole movie. <laughs> there were so many ways that I could have forgiven this movie that they didn't manage. And then, okay, so like, then they, they have to do something to show the prayer going up to heaven. So the camera pans over to their nativity scene and the Christmas star starts blinking as though it's communicating with heaven in Morse code, <laughs> I think. Anyway, yep. but yes, that well, works. Everybody put a big pin in that because this uh, star object will not come back. They will just bring <laughs> it. They'll try to bring it back, but it will have nothing to do with anything. Yeah, it's amazing. Honestly, that could have been my best worst and probably should have been. Yeah. All right. It's like Chekhov's gun, but they just like put it on a different wall in a later scene and then they put it on. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's it. Oh, a gun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll put this back. All right. What are you going to do with that? Nothing. <laughs> and okay, so then she wakes up the next morning with atheist parents. Oh, just... how bad did you want her to come downstairs to like an orgy? Her parents are raw dogging <laughs> on the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> they got Holy shit, got is that off my movies on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> this my Bialik. And but okay, but in this alternate universe where they're atheists he is the bank's lawyer not the poor people that they're foreclosing on anymore also they've replaced their nativity scene with santa decorations and i only point that out because through pure flicks eyes atheists have santa decorations not non-denominational decorations <laughs> yeah not just Santa Christmas decoration. Santa is the evil progressive Christianity <laughs> yes. bad guy of this movie. Right. Like yeah. this is literally a Christmas movie where someone looks down, sees Santa decorations, goes, oh, and is the good guy. <laughs> yep. That's usually Ebenezer. Yeah. And this whole movie, I mean, this whole scene, but really the whole movie is going to be more examples of like, oh, what's evil atheism what would that be like but this scene in particular they're there this is their first shot at it so we get <laughs> we get santa stuff that's one big example yep. of evil atheism yep. mm -hmm. we get joey lawrence um he's an atheist now he's an atheist lawyer which means he's aware that mortgages are real and you have to <laughs> yep. pay them yep. mm -hmm. that's awareness of evil. how mortgage works yes that's, that's yeah. an atheist um, ideal yeah He's wearing a black shirt. So is mom. Yep, black yep. shirts are atheist. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Darkness. they've replaced their quotes. This is my favorite part. Yeah, <laughs> they've replaced their quotes. So instead of the, what was it? The L-U-K-E project? <laughs> yeah. Mom has an evil atheist quote of the day from James Russell Lowell. <laughs> the, the evil atheist abolitionist poet yeah <laughs> i had never heard of this guy but i'm willing to bet he would whip the bible in a random quote contest yeah. he's an abolitionist they were sitting around yeah. and they were like we need an atheist quote and they couldn't find a single shitty atheist right i mean they could have <laughs> asked i mean jesus christ i could have given them some ideas but yeah. Yeah. they literally landed on an abolitionist who was like at the time Fighting against Christians using the Bible to justify slavery, this person was like, no, opposite. <laughs> yes. That's the bad guy they came up and, with. And also, okay, also, no, atheists just eat breakfast. We don't <laughs> say atheist <laughs> grace before we fucking do it. We just eat food. <laughs> uh, uh, up, 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 everybody, sorry. Nothing. Okay, go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now you can eat. <laughs> if everyone would please turn to me and thank me for preparing this meal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So. All right. Now you can eat. All right. So, but now mom tells her she can go to the winter ball because fuck Jesus. And dad gives her Starbucks money because <laughs> of the atheism. I never understood this. Why is it that atheism made them be more generous to her? Nope. I, at no point does this movie explain <laughs> why the generosity is a bad thing, right? Because right. it's supposed to be like buying their affection. And I would get that if they were absentee parents, except there will be several moments where they're just like, hey, I'm just spending time with you and saying nice stuff to you. Yes. 
Yes, exactly. No. I feel like this was just like, here, have some of that Jew coffee from Howard Schultz. <laughs> there you go. We're atheists. Sure hope they win the war on Christmas this year. <laughs> so... Go drink out of a cup that says nothing. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. In their right. faces. So now, okay, so we have to get atheist mom and dad showing up at their Jesus law office and un-Jesusing it, right? Oh, this is time. <laughs> the new office rules, yeah? Yeah. She's just got, <laughs> fuck baby Jesus, I got mine listed ten times, slaps it up over the Ten Commandments. And <laughs> Almost. <laughs> not not that big of an exaggeration. No. Uh, I have written down these rules and I'd like to go through them. If that's oh, all right. Good, There's only 10. Like, Great. When I paused it, it would put a bunch of information over the fucking top of it and I couldn't actually see them. So please. <laughs> uh, yeah. And when I paused it, it was like, there you go. Watch David Earl White's <laughs> fucking out again. And I was like, no, not never. Doing it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Rule number one keep God and work separate. Weird choice. Weird good choice. Rule. <laughs> good rule, but not one that we have, for instance, in our yeah, office. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Rule number one, this is a real law office without magic. <laughs> We're evil. Yes. Two, and they do not understand the, I promise you they don't get the irony of this. The client comes first. They said second. <laughs> yes. yes. It's rule number two. <laughs> rule number three, watch your language, because you know how much atheists hate swearing. <laughs> yeah. I, was that just to like tone it down? Because it was like too <laughs> racy. So they were like, no, 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 no. I, well, but we, yeah, even as atheists, I feel like we were close. We'll watch our language. <laughs> Four, the bottom line matters. <laughs> it, it does. Money counts. Here at this atheist business, mortgages are real. <laughs> yeah, we're evil. Exactly. <laughs> Five, answer the phone on the second ring. <laughs> what? Like, don't answer on the first string like a Christian cuck. Like, what yeah, they, what, yes, I don't understand yes. what that meant. Okay, so they, they, they revisit that later, right? Like, answer on the second ring so people will think we're super busy and you can't get to us on the first. Yep. Oh, what? Heath, Heath are you just trying to make me think you're super busy? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what's going on? I don't answer on any rings. What are you talking <laughs> That's about? That's true, you don't. Uh, number six, always have an answer. <laughs> That's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. Number seven, desk. <laughs> D, what? none of the above. Yeah, what? Number seven, no snacking at your desk. And I just want to say, deal breaker. Deal breaker. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I can't even get Eli to not snack during the record. It's true. No, what it do is. you got right now? Oh, uh, let's see. I got mango nectar, pretzel Gross. sticks, and rubber bands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you want to chew a rubber band. Okay. Rule number eight, respect company property. I love these are the evil rules and one They're of them is respect. Company. Stop stealing our paper towels, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> rule number nine, always dress to impress. And rule number 10, smile like you mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I love they like by rule number what? seven, they couldn't even think of anything bad that atheists might have. So Always just... <laughs> fuck kids. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, OK, Anna's at school and her friends just can't believe her parents agreed to let her go to the ball. Oh, and this is the hashtag conversation, right? Yes. Oh, God. So, again, in an attempt to re-bring about the mean girl apocalypse, they just randomly speak in hashtags, uh, the first of which is hashtag I always get my way. And fun fact, if you search for that, it just takes you to Harvey Weinstein's Twitter. I don't know if people know that. Just, uh. <laughs> yeah, and, and we really dig into the how much these friends all loathe one another. Oh my God. The fucking, the coffee moment. Yeah. Yeah. Where she's just like, uh, the one girl's like, well, I disagree. She's like, why don't you go get coffee? My parents gave me money for Jew coffee today. Yeah. Yep. Go away. And then, and then she orders a non-fat latte with one pump of caramel. And my immediate reaction was like, oh my God, that is, like 8,000 times less obnoxious than Eli's order. Yeah. Like it was so much <laughs> faster. And, and they were looking, they were trying to make the douchey order, right? The yeah. douchey Starbucks order. And they just actually just like 
fairly conservative. I make them change. Okay, the no exaggeration. Eli, um, welcome to Starbucks. What can I get for you? I would like a tall soy peppermint mocha at 110 oh degrees. Not warm, please. And I need them to change the milk container because now they use the same milk container. They don't have the separate ones anymore. So I need them to change the milk container. And I think I would we like... actually don't. We do. You have separate ones. Are you, are you <laughs> no. sure that all of us have changed nope. that policy? They've all changed that policy. So you so want I... me to go into the back mm -hmm. and sanitize this thing mm -hmm. and bring it back and then make the thing you said that took you five minutes? Yes, please. But you interrupted because I also want an Sorry. extra pump of please peppermint. Please finish. <laughs> what? Extra pump of peppermint. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that, experience that, I'm so, I swear to God that's not an exaggeration I've been there yep. many times <laughs> for that exact exchange and also I love this moment at the end where the, like, the, the rival blonde friend tells her that you know, she's like hey I got us all invited to a college party shame you won't be able to go because your parents are so Christian but then the other girl uh, Meredith who's just the yes man of the group she says Wow, how did you convince college boys to let three attractive 17-year-old girls go to their party? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm 45. My child is in college. So <laughs> yeah. I made my son my invite child me. invite me. About it. <laughs> All right, so now it's Sunday morning, and damn it, she doesn't want to go to church, but that's okay because mom and dad aren't going either. No, and again, look, the point is that her parents are evil right now. So one activity not to have the mom do would be to take her shopping. Yeah, right. The mom's like, you know what we could do with that time that we normally spend in church being lectured about, you know, Bronze Age superstition. We could spend quality time together. And <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I, okay, this would be so I, like I know it isn't. But at this moment, I had this fantasy where they just snuck this one by Davy, and the parents were just going to be demonstrably better <laughs> yeah. throughout. No, let's just like actually bond. <laughs> David doesn't realize because he doesn't know any atheists. He's like, they do. They do go sh sh shopping on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, approved. Are you interested in a lifetime? No, I'm okay. Sorry. <laughs> You're selling me the movie. Do da you take David? I'm your old wife. lady. Stop promises. asking me that. <laughs> That's what I take. We're a charity. Do you want to give your money movie to charity? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they get we get the mom and the daughter out shopping. And and of course, the reason that we, we have to have this scene is so that the daughter can pick out a very conservative dress and mom can say, well, what about this crotchless teddy? Yeah, it's right. How about this dress? <laughs> it's red. Like like yeah. Satan. You know? <laughs> yes. yes. It's a and dress. hold on. Look at this. Zip, zip. It's got a hole for a dick right there. <laughs> goes right in. Oh, and look at this. Zip, zip. The abortion goes right out the flap right there. You're all set. Ooh, abortion flaps. Atheist dress. That's it. So then they're walking around and they, they pass this seedy tattoo parlor. And basically, I, I, I wrote in my notes as a joke. Hey, mom, we should get buddy tattoos. But basically, that's what happens. Yep. Well, mom jumps in before that even before the daughter can even be like, oh, maybe I want that. Mom's like, well, uh, there's no God. So let's get you a piercing inside this rural Massachusetts meth house that we're walking oh. past right now. Oh, like you, they Great. walk in and the guy's like, you here for crack or do you think this is a real tattoo parlor? <laughs> <laughs> both. It is both. It is. Both. Both. Nothing makes a tattoo go down smooth like crack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, they're there for a, a belly button piercing, right? But but Anna's having second thoughts because she's like, you know, I want a piercing, and, and Mom's like, yeah, sure. We happen to be right next to a place that does that that looks sanitary. Let's let's try. And so she goes in there, and then Anna starts having second thoughts. And mom's like, no, no, there is no Jesus. We all just turn to dust when we die. Might as well have some holes in us, right? <laughs> and she <laughs> says, you used to tell me if God wanted me to have a piercing, I'd have been born with it. And I wrote in my notes, circumcision much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now uh, they show up at the church to see Uncle Paul, right? She has to go talk to Uncle Paul to figure out what the fuck happened. But they start off with Christianity small talk. Where she yes. walks in, she goes like, <laughs> you know, my favorite character in the nativity was always the sheep. How about you? And he's like, fucking Jesus. I'm, I'm. The Mine's yeah. Jesus, you bitch. <laughs> what? Pastor. The sheep? <laughs> Fuck 
fuck you. Also, this is the first and definitely not the last time that the pastor will do this bit where like she's like, Uncle Paul, can I talk to you? And he's like, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Except he will do it every single time a character comes up to him throughout the entire yes. movie, yeah, no uh -huh. matter the level of emergency when they speak. So just be prepared that that's going to be his intro to every scene moving forward. <laughs> Yeah, and okay, so like they have this conversation where basically she's trying to ask, hey, did God do a magic spell to make my parents atheists? And his lines are fucking insane because he has to answer her ridiculous questions with Bible verses. And it like it's it makes sense in terms of like moving the movie along, but it doesn't make sense in terms of what she just asked him. Or a conversation in English. Right, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. Yes, exactly. Oh, it, yeah, it's crazy. So there, <laughs> it starts out with that stupid sheep and Jesus thing in the manger scene. And he's like, oh, well, let me explain this to you. So the sheep and the baby Jesus are actually related. Yes, that's what he says. And I was like, uh, Eskimo brothers? What the fuck are you going with this? What? Where the fuck are you going, man? <laughs> yeah. But then he, he keeps explaining and he's like, oh, well, no, God always answers prayers. But, uh Here's the thing. It's kind of like, you know, the monkey's paw. It's uh, with the genie. It's, it's like, like a situation. monkey's paw. Yeah, God's you might get in trouble. Big old monkey's paw. And then my favorite example of his is he goes, you know, Mary didn't want to get raped by God because she was 13. <laughs> Pause. And the main character, Anna, is like, oh, shit, that was your helpful story. I thought you were going. No, that's it. Just. God well, raped an eighth grader. OK. Her fucking, her fucking line coming back as she goes. Well, why didn't Mary want to be pregnant with the Savior at 13? <laughs> and he has to further explain yes! this. He's like, yes! okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, look over at your 13-year-old cousin. She's right there. Imagine she got raped by a ghost and got pregnant. Does God is good. Anyway, atheism is bad. I don't know. what. Oh, I got confused myself now. What? Ask me about my softball team. Pro tip, you do not want to show a 13 year old when you're trying to do apologetics for Mary <gasps> of Christ because yeah. everyone watching that movie goes Ugh. oh right uh, so, she doesn't even know math but <laughs> eventually he settles on he says well you know what maybe God is using you like a character in a poorly thought out story like the one that our religion is based on and then she runs out of the church and she's like, atheist parents, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think I'll go for a walk outside. Yeah, but, right, right, but like she has what would then be confirmation of the existence of God and then uses it to thwart the will of that God. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> what? This is great. <laughs> She just ends up in a lake of fire and credits. Like, that's what I would have been. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, while Anna finds some ecstasy, four dudes to fucking a side of fried baby, we're going to pause for a quick break, but then we'll come back and talk about this movie some more. I wish my parents didn't believe in God. Ah, good morning, mom. Good morning, dad. Hey. Hey, what's up? Um, what happened to our nativity scene? Oh, uh, yeah, we inserted it into Yakabim. Yakabim? Ya yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we were having a devil's threesome last night. Yeah. Happy, Happy Thursday, Thursday, right? right? Um, exactly. And and your father is just giving it to Yakabim and it's giving it to he's him. He's not making a peep. It was like he was bored. So, it was bullshit. Yeah, so your father, he grabs the crush and then he, he you know kind of loops. Um, Mom, I'm, I'm good. Uh, can I have money for Starbucks? Um, maybe. You gonna order extra semen in your latte? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> and we're back, and we're gonna rejoin the story by escalating that Anna versus the homeless Santa rivalry they had going <laughs> yeah, and they really have nothing to do here it's just like they're like remember bill engel is in this movie it was we ran into him when we were filming it we took that dvd we're getting our goddamn money <laughs> 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 right. 
And he's just visibly stealing cash out of the bucket at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought it was sort of assumed that when you see a homeless guy standing next to a give money bucket, that that's his money. But apparently in this movie universe, they're supposed to think that that's just a charity that collects money by asking homeless people to stand next to plain tin pails. <laughs> right? Right. And Anna's the the bad guy here because she's atheistically questioning a scam charity like the movie's really bad at this well no and believe me christians are all pretty sure that that's a bad thing you shouldn't do that right yeah. go check out the comment section on the washington post Heath. they're yeah. really really <laughs> upset when you call out their scam charities let me no, tell you not gonna do that. also okay so she goes home and and, and Instead of being home there to greet her, mom and dad have just left her money because they're atheists and those people don't like to have paper with references to God on it in their wallet, I guess. <laughs> Here's an implantable biometric chip with money for monster energy drinks on it. Love, mom. <laughs> you can go back to that tattoo parlor and get it installed in your forehead or the back of your hand. <laughs> we got you the 666th one. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. And then back at the law office, mom and dad are lawyering rudely. Yes. The things that this movie <laughs> tries to play off as evil are such a delight. So the lady comes in who's not a paralegal and she's like, do you guys need any help with the lawyer stuff? And they're like, nope, you're not a lawyer, so you can't help. And the movie's like, see, bitch. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's also, totally can we have the car back that we loaned you for free? Bitches. <laughs> Bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I was thinking, you know, God's dead, so um, you can't just have our car. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what's happening here. Also, a uh, little detail. This is mom and dad, Joey Lawrence and uh, whoever the fuck. They're both lawyers, and they're both lawyering hard now because they're right. atheist mm -hmm. lawyers who want to have gainful employment <laughs> and there's <laughs> there's like supposed to be important law books strewn about on their desk. yes yes <laughs> this is the best one of them one of them is open it's the one in front of joey lawrence is open <laughs> yeah. and it's very clearly a goddamn picture book there yes, is a is. full page picture he's, on their legal book he's not even he wouldn't even look at words on a page Unless they promise to put pictures on them. <laughs> it's a pop-up book, a little gavel coming out. <laughs> Goofus on one side, Gallant on the other. Yeah, exactly. Exactly how all <laughs> law books are constructed. <laughs> Looks like Donald Trump's briefing. I'll be with you in a second. I need to find out what the cow goes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, so, and then they're trying to establish, because they keep having her come home, and there's just money waiting for her and not her parents' love, you know? So they're trying to go for that, but they keep fucking it up like they do in this next scene where Colton stops by to, to see Anna, and, like, Dad is there. Right. You know, he's there at the house when her date shows up to talk to the date and say, hey, by the way, like, if you need somebody put in a good word for you at college, this is my alma mater, <laughs> like a dick. I do love this college brochure, though. Yeah, <laughs> he says, he says, well, son, you know, if you've been thinking about your future like I have, I've been thinking about your future. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's because right on the front of this pamphlet, it says your life, your education, your future. And I just, my <laughs> face just read that. <laughs> I needed it to remember my line in this life. And he asks what time he needs to have her home. And because they're evil atheists, he's like, I don't know. If you kill her, make sure you eat her. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's like, when you're <laughs> done with her, I guess. Yeah. When would God want her back? Oh, right. God's dead. No curfew. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. I don't know. There's a uh, great late night gangbang. It's actually in the pamphlet. Yeah, Check it out. <laughs> I went to a really fun college. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We can abort her. We can, we can abort as many of them as she can carry. Yeah, so then, so they go on a date to to an orchard, <laughs> and he warns her. He's like, "Hey, just want to be clear before we walk through this apple orchard. I'm poor, and I need you to know that about me." And she's <laughs> like, oh, "Okay." She's like, "Yeah, I mean, we're you took me out on a date to an orchard, so <laughs> I, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to 
Oh, they're foreclosing on your house. Well, yeah. No, okay. That, uh, yeah. Did, did you not fill out the anti-homeless form? Or, <laughs> or, yeah. and, and of course, she says, don't worry. My parents are help, will help you. They're lawyers, and they can undo mortgages with law. Oh, <laughs> But uh, hold on, shit. Uh, they are pro homelessness now. I think atheists. I can't really tell you why. All right. So now, mom and dad sit down to rich people dinner, i.e., dinner from very, very far away. This is why is this always a trope <laughs> in Christian I have movies? No fucking idea. Why do they hate candlelit dinners? And what and, is this? <laughs> and who to fight? Like my wife and I have a relatively large dining room table, but we sit next to each other on it when we eat. <laughs> it's just the- you guys don't do the Bugs Bunny thing. No, with, actually, like, the we don't. <laughs> Giant. We are far away from each other now. What? <laughs> we just come over. God, come over to the side. All right, and so this is the setup for the, oh, shit, it's Bible study day, right? And they'd forgotten all about it because they're atheists now. Okay, and we're talking about this is where Heath enters the movie and then exits it. (laughs) (laughs) What? Okay, so one of the characters. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Thank you. Yep, yep, no, wait, I get it now. (laughs) No, that guy's the fucking best. You're obviously talking about the, the, the recently homeless guy who just walks in and starts eating off one of the two plates of food that are clearly sitting there for those two people. And he's like, oh, pork loin. (laughs) I'm going to have one of these plates. There's eight of us. You guys figure it out. Joey Lawrence literally turns to him and he's like, hey, um, are you eating what could not possibly be construed as anything but my dinner? (laughs) And homeless guy's like, yeah. Yeah, sure am. (laughs) Is there more? Good. (laughs) Can I have seconds? And then as he's doing that, the, the secretary's shitty kid breaks a vase. The mom is saying, hey, be careful with your kid around. That's a super expensive fuck. Right. <laughs> and the, the secretary-, secretary picks the daughter up and says, it's OK, honey. We don't care about that vase you broke. Yeah, she, she's. She instantly tells the daughter that it does not matter. She broke something in a stranger's house instantly. Yes. Yes. The, do- <laughs> the, the fucking secretary goes, we can always replace that vase, but we can't replace you. As though the kid was in a life or death struggle where one of them <laughs> had to die. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I wrote in my notes, look, people are more important than things, but that doesn't mean things don't matter at all. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, the mom's standing there going like, are you fucking kidding me? And finally she gets around to apologizing on behalf of her daughter. And the the mom says, it's all right. I'll send you a bill, which is supposed to be a bad guy thing. But it's like, no, your kid just broke an expensive thing in her home. You should she shouldn't have to. You should be the one saying, just yes. send me a bill. Yeah, the Just to be clear, the villain in this movie is. It's okay, your child I warned destroyed something four seconds into my house. And the protagonist is the one whose immediate reaction to destroying her friend's personal belongings was, all is dust and nothing withstands the blow of the hammer, little Jenny. Don't worry. Maria Kondo says we should just get rid of all this shit anyway. Smart lady. And then I love this so fucking much. Then the writers all sat there. They thought they had this great comedy premise of the atheists receiving Bible study, but they didn't. The writers all just sat there for a long time going, yeah, that'd be so funny. They'd probably break stuff. I don't. We need to write ourselves yes, out of this please, premise that we wrote. Please. Yeah. Okay. So they just shit all over their comedy premise entirely by having dad go, you know, I'm sorry, guys. We should have canceled on you. We don't want to do Bible study. And everybody's like, Oh, okay. We'll go to like, you know, Denny's. Oh, okay. okay. And then as they're closing the door, they turn to each other and go, we need to add them to our prayer list. <laughs> you get it? Cause they didn't go into someone's house and instantly start eating their food and destroying <laughs> their property. <laughs> Can't bring us Christians anywhere. Anyway. So, okay. So meanwhile, Anna and Colton are still orcharding. And then he waxes intellectual about Saturn's moons. It's the best. Watching this 
49 year old man try to like no big deal that he knows yeah i know about saturn's moons don't worry about it pretty much an astrophysicist yeah <laughs> I love it. He, got, he has one line there where she's like, wow, you know a lot about space and stuff. He goes, this makes no fucking sense. He goes, I like to see things that other people can't see. And I'm like, unless he's talking about your boobs, that line makes no fucking sense. Right. <laughs> oh, and then meanwhile, at the law office, the secretary is not allowed to say Merry Christmas anymore. She has to say happy holidays. It's the best. <laughs> God is great, dead? What? <laughs> I forget. what well, we are lawyers uh, of the observable universe lawyer. Hello, science law. Hello. Hello. Science today. Mortgages are real. We are lawyers. Let's <laughs> go. All right. So and, and then we cut to Anna and her friends uh, being bitchy at each other some more. And again, the, I, I know we've already talked about this, but the the hatred that drips from each of these lines, right? It's supposed to be like, I am going to give the speech because I'm the queen. But instead it's, no, listen to my speech. I am a queen. Yeah. Yeah. No, ever, <laughs> like again, that. there's there's just no humor in it whatsoever. <laughs> they, they have no ability to like, you know, play any of this off. Everything is delivered like a death threat. <laughs> So, yeah, so she, so then fucking Anna decides to practice her speech, and she only has one line, which is basically, I'm better than you fucks. Yeah, that's how she was going to do her speech. Yeah. And then we, we go back to mom and dad. We're at the law office, and mom and dad have decided they've changed their mind. Now they'll be the lawyer for the bank because there is no God, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. The guy that the, the guy was trying to get them to do this at the beginning He's like, oh, glad you're on board with our bank partnership legal thing that we're doing. What changed your mind about, you know, making money? And they're like, oh, mostly godless math, you know. You know. <laughs> godless math. Yeah. Standard. All right. So now Anna and her frenemies are going to that college party, right? And, oh, my God, it's an accurate college party. It is. It is. That's the first yeah. thing I wrote in my notes. Is like, this is the most accurate depiction of a college party I've ever seen in any film, Christian or otherwise. Congratulations, Pure yeah. Flix. You nailed this. You did it. No, <laughs> Nobody showed oh. up. There's too much food, and everyone just ends up playing foosball or Xbox. They nailed it. Yes, right. Foosball's yeah. awesome. There's like seven people like foosball. lingering around a large room, most of them around a foosball t uh, table, and there's, you know, not enough beer. That's it. Nailed it. <laughs> but 18 bags of chips. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted these girls to walk in and start doing like choreographed group dancing. Like, guys, are we not? What? I thought that's parties. Don't we <laughs> all know the dance? Did, to we, uh, did we step it up for no reason? Okay. Have you guys not seen High School Musical, the musical, the series? What the fuck? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> But but no, it's time for the boyfriend to impress us with his science some more. Oh. And this is so, so sad. So sad. He's like, you want to hear some deep science? Stars are far. Oh, God, <laughs> Jesus. All right. So first of all, this is our fucking shit. You guys can't have the stars shit. And That's it doesn't even us. work for us. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But she's like, yeah, you know, my parents are so dumb. They believe that, like, the earth began when God said, let there be light. And, of course, Colton, the good Christian astronomer, has to come back and go like, no, yeah, no, astronomy totally lines up with that, with the Big Bang. That's, like, just like that. As long as you don't read, you know, the 47th word of the Bible or anything after that, it totally lines up with, well, you have to ignore the first 42. So if you go, words 40 through through 46 do not directly conflict with provable facts. So like that's pretty much the science confirming yeah. the Bible. Pretty much. It's basically, I mean, it's a dome of firmament like the Truman Show and astronomy shows us that. That would like to say if you read. There's a very good documentary on it. You should check it out. It's in 15 parts on YouTube. And at one point he's like, so, uh, you know why I love stars and astronomy? You know what? It's my favorite thing about stars. You, you have to measure the distance in light years. And no, no you, you don't. You can measure it you in Nat's cocks. 
you can measure the distance in literal. There's infinity numbers. You can set any <laughs> unit with any number. And then he steals the we're made of stardust thing. That's art. That's an atheist thing. <laughs> stop it. Motherfucker, stop it. <laughs> All right. I want you to I want to tell you about the atheist teapot. So atheists keep demanding food for this teapot, right? <laughs> but you know it's fucking there. Hear me out. <laughs> All right. So now, yeah, now that they got Carl Sagan facing the direction in his coffin that they wanted, we, we hear a... I, a rape inside the house? What? Okay. We hear her yelling, stop it, stop it. But they run inside and they forgot that they had originally set up the movie to be empty. So there's just one guy standing there not touching anyone. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's exactly right. Because they, they had an idea that there would be a guy trying to get a little too fresh with one of the friends. But they can't show that in a pure flicks movie. So it's just a guy standing near a girl yelling, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Good chance he was doing something that he shouldn't. I mean, just like statistically. Oh yeah, no, know. I'm sure. I <laughs> believe me, I'm believing the victim. I know, I know that like as this happened, there were probably a bunch of incels that watched this movie going, "It's exactly like it is. It's exactly like that every time." But Anna stops the rape by pushing over the popcorn, and they all run away. I'm just saying it would have worked on Heath. <laughs> oh no, the popcorn! Now I don't even feel like it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut to the next day where she discovers that she goes to the table and I think it's going to be another oh her parents have just left money for her and not their love but no no they've left a note come by the law office after school and we will buy you a convertible for Christmas Evo <laughs> <laughs> secular motor vehicle <laughs> So, all right, now we have to have the scene where the secretary is having a really rough go of it and those atheists are just being really mean to her. Oh, I will never in a million years describe the genuine agony of watching this 240-minute, 19-examples comedy take of they keep asking her for things. Man, they <laughs> thought that us watching that woman walk back and forth Across this fucking room was going to stay funny for hours. Okay, okay. We're going to have to pause the movie at this point. Maybe show the Pure Flix commercial again. Because people, they're going to be falling out of their chairs. We got to yeah, give them time right. to and recover. Some of them have bad hips. But eventually, she tells them what's what. Yeah, right. And then they fire her. <laughs> you know, atheists... Always firing people for arbitrary reasons like they're gay or they're trans or they're <laughs> unmarried and pregnant. Well, and, and let's let's also point out that like everything we've seen of this secretary suggests that she is in the wrong line of work. And massively incompetent. Yeah. Right. Like this is like the wrong way to fire her, but it's the right decision to make. Even in the comedy take where she's supposed to be like, oh, my goodness, a phone call and an intercom at the same time. That's not hard. No. Like she, she fails at it. But the task that, is, <laughs> that she's supposed to be stuffing into her mouth as it travels down the goddamn <laughs> mercury foam conveyor belt towards her is just answering the phone while someone else is in the room. Yes. Yeah. And of course, the whole time this is going on. Colton's dad, who's about to lose his house, is is there waiting for them to see him about possibly representing him in this this mortgage dispute with the bank. Mm -hmm. The dispute being pay us. No. Yes. Right. So. Yeah. But he's the, they're not going to fire their secretary. They tell him they're not going to help him out at all. And Anna witnesses all of that and sees how evil they really are. And this guy is insane. He's like, uh, sorry. Sorry. Can't you just use your lawyer magic to make it so I don't have to pay my mortgage? I waited in your lobby for 20 minutes. <laughs> no, uh, you need to pay mortgages, it turns out. And he's like, I don't understand what you're saying. No idea what you're talking about. Way <laughs> over my head. <laughs> you know what's a really good idea? For this person not to own a house. Yes. This is super dumb. Yes. All right. But yeah, but he's like, why won't you help? And they're like, well, because... We, there is no God and we all return to dust upon death. And he's like, oh, man. So then he leaves and they're like, they turn to the daughter and they're like, 
hey, let's, uh, you know, go buy you a car. And she's like, I don't want a car now because you guys are mean. You guys are mean. I told my boyfriend you'd use their lawyer magic to save them. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And, and and like, again, they're trying to make mom and dad seem evil here, but they're trying to buy her a car. And by the way, they seem chiefly concerned about safety. <laughs> they literally both mom and dad do an evil finger steeple when they say, all right, let's go car shopping. Steeple, steeple, steeple. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, and again, when she finally confronts them about this, they say, real quote, if Mr. Smith had paid his mortgage on time, this wouldn't be a problem. And the movie might as well be like, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so now they're, they're having dinner sometime later, and mom's mad about the nativity scene reappearing. <laughs> and Anna's like, so, uh, any chance you guys are punking me? Like a fun <laughs> atheism prank? <laughs> and look, they, like here's a perfect example of them fucking up their thing because like mom and dad and her are just having a, a good conversation, you know, like it's boring to look at, but it's good parenting, right? You know, they're treating mm -hmm. her the way you should treat a 17 year old that is your child. And then, of course, eventually they're like, fuck, we got to get back to the plot. Um, Has your boyfriend gotten kicked out of his about out, out of the bank's house yet? Because fuck that guy. That they dude. literally do the laugh sigh thing where they're like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, <laughs> anyways <laughs> Did your boyfriend get kicked out of his house yet? <laughs> Ask you about that Should have led with this <laughs> Yeah She asked him She's like So are you, are you homeless now? Because Because you don't understand how that works And he's like Well yeah we prayed for a mortgage payment So Yeah no that should yep, Yeah pretty homeless. much Pretty much should homeless nail it now. Yeah which is interesting Because that means that God was listening to her pray that her parents would be atheists and him pray that his dad would get a job at the same time. And he's like, you know, it'd be oh. funny. It's, nobody ever expects me to answer atheism <laughs> prayers. Okay. Same time prayer. I'm going to have to flip a coin on this one, yeah. Colton. <laughs> God's just trying to get in touch with the bank. Oh, you're not open right now. Okay. Right. Wait, it's, well, I have to when, when is it? <laughs> it's Wednesday from 12 to 2. I'm what, When would I? I have stuff. That's crazy. <laughs> That's it? It's a two-hour window? I need to fax you a form? I invented Wednesday. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Yeah, so. I'm God. I do not have a fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then, because they know that in the movie, her and Colston have to break up at some point, right, to follow the formula. So now she comes over and she's got to be mad at him for something. So she has the, how dare you not tell me the day you were being, you told me you were being evicted, but you weren't specific about the day. How dare you? How dare you not tell me you were homeless? I almost boned you. I could have caught homelessness. <laughs> How dare you not give me something more sensible to be mad at as we move out of act two? <laughs> <laughs> and Colton's the fucking best in this scene because he's like, because she eventually gets around to being like, it's because I wished my parents were atheists. And he's like, seriously, are you? Are you are you talking oh. about yourself right now? <laughs> I'm actively moving out of my home and you're telling me that you're sorry because you have magic powers. Is that, is that what you came uh, here that to do? That is what I'm saying. Yep. Okay, but it, apparently it works. So I could pray for like you to have money. But no, I'm going to pray to cancel the, AC, the atheism thing and see how that goes. We'll see. Yeah, right. Just as soon as I find a fucking Zoltar machine. So she wanders off to like yeah, I walk sadly by out of focus Christmas lights for a while and watch other happy families rejoicing in their togetherness. Oh, uh, uh, wanted her to pass by a Jewish house. Fuck, never mind. They hate each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just like families everywhere on every front lawn at the same time that she passes being like, we all love God as a family. No amount of money can make us happier. This is the best we <laughs> Yeah, right. They're all going, gee, Grandma and Grandpa, it's sure great that we have such a house that you can come to visit. <laughs> <laughs> she also has this moment during this montage where she looks over this bridge. It's one of those shitty walking bridges. I thought she was going to throw herself off it like Javert. <laughs> the tiny little bridge. <laughs> Land in ankle deep water. Ah. Uh. Oh, no, I'm wet. High, and, and now my feet hurt. <laughs> so, Is that Dawson? <laughs> Dawson Leary? 
<laughs> so meanwhile, back with did we cross over <laughs> into the creek? Oh, so and then of course now she has to make friends with Bum Santa, right? So she she's sitting on this bench and Bum Santa comes up and he says, "Hey, you know, this is kind of awkward because we're enemies or whatever in this movie, but like." That's the bench I sleep on. So could you move? And she just keeps like scooting over a little she bit. Just slides <laughs> it's over. The fucking best. And he's like, no, 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 I need the I need the whole the whole bench. All full bench me. And then she Jeez. just slides a little further. <laughs> Seriously, you gotta get off my sleeping bench. I have a podcast. Can you just <laughs> And then she goes, she goes, wait, you sleep on a bench? And he's like, yeah, I'm fucking homeless. Like, I'm obviously the homeless guy. She's like, oh, well, then yelling at you is pretty cold blooded. Ha, huh? fuck. Uh, it makes our rivalry pretty, seem less yeah. jovial. <laughs> and then he's just like, oh, my God, I'm homeless. But here is a candy cane. Please leave. And she's like, oh, candy. Let's eat candy together. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm bribing you to leave with this candy cane, even though I'm homeless and it's my entire store of food. You need to leave. And she Go goes, get it. She scoots over a little bit further. Yeah. So, And then she goes, she turns over and she's like, you know, I think I've learned something here today. And I'm like, no, you can't have because there's still half an hour left of this fucking thing. Oh, yeah, there is. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie is going to need a minute to figure out what the hell to do with the last third of itself. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Can Anna evangelize, I, I'm going to say, hard enough? How the fuck did they think having a good lawyer was going to help Colton's dad? If your heart stays hardened for more than four hours, who should you call? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the holy shit they need this script by five conclusion of Wish for Christmas. Uncle Paul, I think I might have done something that... I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I'm fine. Oh. Um, good. Okay, so last night when... Ah, uh, what's going on with me? You might ask. How thoughtful. Thanks for asking. Well, I'm at my softball league, and it's going Uncle pretty Paul? good. I enjoy Uncle my Paul? softball league. Uncle yep. Paul, I what? actually really need your help. Oh, what's that? You want to know how my softball league is going? Is that what you said? Wow, thank you for asking. Well, I, I'm batting third right now. I get and it. I'm doing great. I have a pretty good batting average. Uncle Paul, so... I do get it. But, uh, excuse me, Pastor. The family is here for the viewing of their daughter. I'm great, Nick. Thanks for asking, I'm, Nick. I, how are you, Pastor? Fuck you. I'm great. Can can we go see the body now? Yeah, we can see the body now. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to open up with Anna and her friends out shopping for the winter ball. And she sees the ex-secretary, the fired secretary, and runs over to check on her. And I got to say, okay, this woman is such a god-awful actor that at first I was wondering if her character was supposed to have to pee in this moment. <laughs> okay, in her defense, the child actor that she is holding is trying as hard as she can to run into traffic. And I am rooting for her. <laughs> well, and what's so amazing is that they're so fucking stupid that they didn't have, the, like, most of this scene is shot, like, higher than the height of the child. But they still have this poor woman trying to keep track of this two-year-old the whole goddamn time. Sorry, uh, Hazel keeps saying, I'm in hell, release me from this prison. I gotta... <laughs> <laughs> well, the kid's making great points, because the mom is like, yeah, you know, you guys fired me, your, your, your parents fired me, and so now I'm a, you know, single mom without a job. But I'm praying, so it's cool. And the two-year-old is just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Get a new job. We're not fine. Nothing's working. <laughs> and then, okay, so yeah, so she sees, then she sees her pastor uncle, and she's like, yeah, this scene wasn't going anywhere anyway. So she walks in, and she's like, hey, dude, can you move this plot the fuck along? Noah already did the Act 3 break out of sheer fucking boredom. We've got nothing going on here. <laughs> Wanted her so badly to run into Uncle Paul meeting his lover. Just like, oh, Anna, hello. I'm meeting a young man for not blowjobs. <laughs> Why do you have an you Arby's, gift have card an Arby's card? <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually he's doing something weirder. He's um playing chess. 
I <laughs> with gods because he's by himself. Yep. I mean, like you can play chess against yourself, but that's not what he's doing. He seems to be communing with God and playing chess slightly better. And the board layout is physically possible. This is actually impressive. I think this is the first time we've ever had a chess board in one of these movies that was like, oh yeah, there could be pawns there. <laughs> uh, in front. Yep. That's where they might they be. Back up. Not, yeah, that not even back a checker up. on there. Good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, Good job. Right, right, exactly. She's asking like, all right, so what, like, how do I figure this stuff out with God and stuff? I don't know. And he's like, you got to be your true self, you know, and God will provide for you at that point. And she goes, how do we know our true selves? And he says, well, you got to ask God. Mm, and I hear it now. <laughs> Did I? No, I don't. I don't hear it now. Okay. All right. I don't hear it. <laughs> Just 30 minutes of awkward silence and credits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, how are we true selves? So... <laughs> One one of his lines is the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. But he's been speaking English and not Bibleese up until that point. So I expected one side of his smile to droop and for him to be like, oh, no. <laughs> I smell toast. <laughs> Bell's palsy. <laughs> so, all right. But now she actually reads the Bible and we watched. That happened again. Remember that like in, in Seinfeld, when they needed a great example of something no one would ever want to watch someone else do, it was Reed. <laughs> just throwing it. I just want to underline that one time real quick. <laughs> We've seen so much reading. Also, she's bad at acting. Reading. Yes, she is. This actress yeah. has to, she's just like, read, read, read. Don't say read. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say read. Which ways do the eyes go? <laughs> yes. You're mouthing words. What? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, now I see. I was supposed to spare the cows in the city of A. Okay. This is making <laughs> yeah, a lot right, of sense. Right, yeah. What the fuck is she going to learn from that? <laughs> <laughs> we need to put the Christ back in winter ball. I don't know yeah. what this okay. movie makes. No yes. sense. Yes, alright. So yeah, that's... The, w she reads the Bible for a while, and now it's time for her and her friends. So they've been doing this planning the winter ball shit the whole time. The idea, I guess, is that in this town, the way they plan their winter ball is that they have a bunch of different groups come in and say, we'd like to do the ball like this, and then they pick the best group, and they do this like four days before the goddamn thing happens, apparently, so that it fits into this dumbass plot. So her and her friends have been working on this presentation through the entire fucking movie. They're about to walk in and do it, and she stops them. Anna stops them and says, no, our theme should be about Jesus. And they're like, we have three minutes. That's not, you can't possibly change it. It's in three minutes. We do the thing. And the answer is no. And in a Christian movie first, she's like, oh, okay. Like, because every other Christian movie we've watched, she would have been like, no. And then they, like, cut the head off the queen and wrap it in a blanket, and suddenly it's Christ in the manger. But yeah. no, they're just like, no, you're not allowed to change this last minute. And she's like, but I love Jesus, and you're allowed to be an asshole about Jesus. It's a pure flicks movie. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> also, just really quick, can we talk about that fucking scarf she's oh. wearing? The <laughs> the size of the scarf is a joke, right? It's they're take, it's taking up the entire frame. I can't even see the rest of the movie. <laughs> it's an Elizabethan ruff. She's wearing an Elizabethan <laughs> it's ruff. Nuts! Do people really have scarves like that? I wanted her to look down the bar and see one of those raptors that <laughs> killed Wayne Knight, and just it nods at her like, "Hey, buy you a drink." Oh sh shit! The scarf is next. <laughs> Every time I wear this damn thing. <laughs> yeah, and I also love, so like... No footing in here. She's supposed to have her traumatic breakup with her friends here, so they have to have that, like, storming offline, which, as this movie presents it, is, and I quote, you're not the queen, Anna, not anymore. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then there's a giant pause, and everybody's like, Oh, you're done? Okay. Oh, wait, wait, I wait, thought wait. you were going to storm off. You know what? Let's all, so we can all storm off on three. Everyone storm off on three. <laughs> To no, I we storm, then you storm. It just doesn't make sense. She might as Three. well have yelled, You're not the queen, Anna. Not anymore. Exit stage left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, okay, so now Anna goes to the ex secretary's house to babysit, I guess. And the secretary paints good cows. She She's was talented the whole time. Mm, they're so bad. I love it. 
Oh God, I love what non-artists think is art. There's, it's, I live another 10 years every time I see a Thomas Kincaid painting hanging up in someone's heart. And this movie has given me so much life. These terrible, shitty oil paintings of cows. I thought they were pretty cool. Oh, this is like Thomas Kincaid's like half blind <laughs> nephew who sucks and can't get on the fridge. It's so bad. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Then you guys just when you do get your fucking Christmas presents, you can just hang them in the bathroom. Then. <laughs> I thought they were good. Noah found the original artworks from this film. <laughs> also, Rebecca, this Rebecca's the fired paralegal, not paralegal, terrible painter. Her scarf is even bigger than the last scarf. It's bigger than her body. It's insane. Yeah. This movie would have been amazing if just for each scene moving forward, there had been a comically larger scarf on a character. But that's no one's what's acknowledging happening. It. You're not exaggerating what that's. There, there has to be a bet with like the crew here that 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 they put this together. It was her entire body is wrapped in a room sized scarf with like punch cards. Yeah. There's also this great moment where she sees the sketch of the Virgin Mary painting that Rebecca was making for her parents and she goes, I never realized there were drawings underneath the paintings. <laughs> and I wanted Rebecca so badly to be like, well, that's because that's not always the case. They don't always draw <laughs> the paintings. <laughs> Sometimes. Now I really want to know what you think drawing and painting are. Yeah, off. right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I didn't know what a light year was earlier, y'all. They, you know. <laughs> All right, so now um, Anna is, we, we get Anna at church, but now she ignores her phone and doesn't text anymore while she's at church. Mm -hmm. And then she goes home and mom has got a bunch of her old clothes and she's putting them in bags and stuff. And Anna goes, oh, I'm sure the homeless people who get those clothes will really like them. And she's like, fuck you. I'm not donating these. I'm going to sell them because I'm an atheist now. <laughs> I'm gonna sell these and buy some stem cells. Fuck that, <laughs> Christian Jane. Excuse me, I'll be at Plato's closet getting dozens of cents on the dollar. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, but what she's actually saying is like, I'm gonna sell these clothes and like give money to modest needs. I'm evil. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. So mom wanders off and Anna. Does, oh, I'm sorry, mom wanders off to work on a Sunday, y'all. And then Anna decides to steal a suit from her dad, Robin Hood style, to give to Bill Engvall. Yep. By the way, that will never pay off. Like, we'll see him wear this suit jacket later in the movie, but it's not like he's like, oh, this is the suit jacket that gives me my house back. She's just like, and <laughs> stealing from my parents. I'm the protagonist. Yep. Yeah. I'm a nice looking formal homeless person now is the solution <laughs> yes. given by that jacket. Yep. So, yeah. So she brings the suit and, and dinner. She brings an even worse looking pizza somehow <laughs> to the homeless Santa. All right. This is the one that even Papa John's turned down. <laughs> so, <laughs> I brought you pizza and preachy weirdness. Right. It's. It's really a hot pocket that I kind of like pulled in half and <laughs> into this big circle shape. Sort of cut it sideways. It looks just, just like a pizza when you do that. Yeah. I sat on a Pizza Hut calzone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he goes like, and then she starts getting all preaching. He's like, since when were you a Christian? She goes, oh, it's we're well into act three. I know you can't tell from the plot because I've already learned my lesson and it just seems like we're killing time now. But um, and then she's like, hey, I brought you a present which I stole from my dad. She also uh, has this really bitchy moment where she's like, you know, you got me something too. And he's like, what's that? And she's like, perspective. And he's like, cool, cool. Nice to hear the worst thing that's ever happened to me and continues to happen to me. Got you perspective. Yes. Cool. Yes. <laughs> and then she eats some of the pizza that yes. she bought for the whole <laughs> yes. Like, All right. I got, you, I got you this bottle of wine. I'll have a glass if you're going to open yeah, it. I already opened exactly. it. It's open. It's open. 
I got you an open I, bottle. Oh, of you wine. brought me a pizza. I brought you half of a pizza. Yeah. Yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got you this cocaine and these two straws. So <laughs> I brought us a pizza. <laughs> So, and by the way, is it just me or is it really weird that an old man is asking what's supposed to be a teenage girl in this movie about the winter dance as though he was feeling out to see if she had a date? <laughs> so, are you going with like a group of friends? Uh, it's crazy. I had a, uh, my date got AIDS. So, <laughs> she AIDS? Yep. She got huh. it. From, what's her name? Oh, breast milk. Her name's what? Breast milk star. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I will go to the dance with you. Oh. All right. So then she prays. <laughs> All right. And so then she prays to God that he'll bring her parents back to him. Right. <laughs> Unharden his heart. It was at this moment that I realized, oh, my God, this is just like what he did to Pharaoh. If this movie involves frogs and locusts, I'm back the fuck on board. You can still save Ooh. it, Pierre Flix. Yeah, that would have been good. Also, she decides that she's not going to wear the slutty dress. She's going to wear the bottom half of a wedding dress to the dance yep. instead. Yes. <laughs> she looks like a five-year-old went to the Met Gala. In this yes. thing. It's so much. And then they're like, are you ready to go to the winter ball? And she's like, hold on. I need one more thing. I need the star from the nativity scene from earlier. Don't worry. This will come back. We think he's the best. <laughs> we seem very right, confident. I'm just going to grab this MacGuffin and we'll take <laughs> off. Cool. We go. All right. So final fuckingly, we get to the winter goddamn ball where divorced dad band is going to rock that fucking town like it's never been rocked before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this band is so sad. Like. This band is to real music as the pizza in this yes, movie is yes, to real pizza. Exactly. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so that rough. pizza the band, exactly. God. Seth Andrews has partied backstage with this band. <laughs> oh, for really, sure. Really depressing. Absolutely. Doing lines off of Corinthians. <laughs> you guys want to play some Dance Dance Revolution? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? <laughs> Yeah, and, th and they definitely, like, this band, it's like an eight-piece, horrible, sad, middle-aged oh. dude band. Just eight lead guitars. <laughs> yeah. Eight, yeah. <laughs> all guys fighting over lead guitar <laughs> during the gig. <laughs> and, like, they, they, have, they have to be 500 feet away from a bunch of different places <laughs> because of a bunch of different shit that a bunch of different band members did. Really hard to book a gig. This is a weird town that let them book a gig at their town winter ball. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, Anna go comes into the ball. She slow motion walks up to Colton and just then a slow song starts. So they have to dance. Now, along the way, they broke up for him not telling her he was homeless now ish or whatever. So he went with sexy glasses girl. Right. So they dance for a mm. while. Sexy glasses girl comes up and she's like, OK, is this a threesome thing or are you going to fuck off? <laughs> oh, Lindsay. She's got the nose ring and the librarian glasses. Oh. It's good yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he's like, so, Anna, this is Lindsay in your face. Uh, her dad <laughs> actually set me up with a tarp refinance thing. You actually don't have to pay for your mortgage, it turns out. It's, it's weird. It's weird. Huh. Um, and so and then out of the goddamn blue, somebody says, and now Anna will give a speech. I'm like, why? And they're like, well, because it's dramatic finale of the the movie okay her friends heckle her as she walks up right her friends are like eh, better better eh, better better well, swing okay. better, better, better. <laughs> so here's what you what's supposed to be going on here and again i pieced this together in retrospect is that you know that she was fighting with her friend all the whole time about who was going to give the speech the person who gives the speech is supposed to be the person who set up the ball who wh whose theme they picked because she wasn't you know she stormed off and wanted it to be about jesus it was the other girl's chance to give the speech but to fuck with her she had him announce anna hoping that anna wouldn't have a speech and would be embarrassed oh oh is that the plot i think that's the plot like it, it, it might be you know that psychological test where it's just a square in a circle moving around a screen but you make a story out of it anyway it might be that the <laughs> movie 
Yep. You have sure. plot pareidolia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But I think that's what was supposed to happen. So she goes up to give her speech, and she's like supposed to have the dramatic like rip up her notes moment, but it's an impromptu speech, so she doesn't have notes. <laughs> you know what? I can't do this. Reach, reach, reach. Never mind, I can. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> she starts trying to rip up her cell phone. This isn't... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I broke a tooth. Broke a tooth. <laughs> I just got to get a corner started. <laughs> somebody, somebody help. Somebody, bam. So, okay. It's poison Dude, inside. I've, I've been poisoned. <laughs> so she gives this speech. This is the and greatest she, moment in the history of Christian And then she, film. she says, let's all go to church. And she holds up the star and there is complete fucking silence and if you had wanted to make this my favorite movie in the history of time all you have to do is ADR it and someone going boo <laughs> at this moment of the movie but then she leaves and nobody follows her okay wait there's this this bizarre moment because this this star was the thing that like you know went all blinky when she made her prayer right so it's like it's as though they told her that they were going to CGI it lighting up or something she just holds up this star awkwardly for like four seconds nothing happens and then she puts it back down and starts finishing her speech like she thought that angels were going to fly out of it or something she starts making sound effects herself <laughs> pew 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 I got this at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> and be like, Hobby Lobby? Am I right? When she ah. walked out and no one came with her, I wrote, I'm sorry, did this just become my favorite fucking movie? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> she ends what she thought was this big, impactful speech, and she held up the star, and she ends it, and she leaves. And literally, we watch her walking by herself and like looking back. She looks back like, no, like they told no, her. They're like, oh, no, then no the one. crowd will come around the corner. So the actress looks back. She's like, oh, you guys are fucking assholes. Fine. Just- well, they <laughs> even have her walk by her parents that are, and they're all smiling. And as soon as she walks by, they're like, I ain't going to fucking church. I uh, love that bullshit. moment so much. <laughs> oh, I wanted them to cut back to the entire ball just sitting there being like, what the fuck did she mean? We're not following. Like, she wants to, like, follow. <laughs> I'm not fucking going. These it's poor girls cold. made decorations. And the- There's still cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So she now she goes to the church dressed for a dance, which is fucking hilarious. And dressed for a dance like a nine-year-old princess or something. And then, you know, oh, hey, what do you know? Homeless Santa's there. He's wearing his suit. It all fits together now. And she walks up to the nativity scene. And places that star from earlier on the nativity as though she's trying to figure out how it factors into the plot still. I don't think you're allowed to just add your own shit to the nativity. But I am 1000% walking around with stars to local churches this Christmas. Oh, I'm going to have Christmas. a pocket full of small baby Yodas. I mean, so. Dude, if you walked up and just gently... Set a sheep down on a nativity? No, they'd be like, oh, he's he's in a movie. He's got a thing going on. <laughs> hey, so the chorus stops. They're just like, hey, uh, why is that Jewish guy putting a sheep on our thing? Stop <laughs> you it. You're not allowed to put sheep Stop there. that. Sir? <laughs> Look at rule number seven right here between how many rings on the phone. <laughs> Rabbi, are you homeless? Still, you can't do that. <laughs> Should have paid your mortgage. So... <laughs> But now, okay, but now the whole town does decide to not be at the winter ball and go to church with her. All the same church, interestingly uh, enough, that they have the one denomination town. But are her parents coming? Dot, dot, dot. Colton shows up. Colton's dad shows up. Uh, apparently, they're still in the town just wandering aimlessly until they find a home <laughs> that doesn't have a mortgage, I guess. <laughs> Anyone have any free houses that you don't have to pay for? <laughs> and then finally, mom and dad walk in and click. There's resolution, right? They become Christian again. They they sit down beside her and Colton's dad and say, hey, we're going to switch lawyer sides so you won't have to move out of your house now. We switched sides. <laughs> We Which have is the, amazing. We have the flag or something because apparently law in this universe follows Calvin Ball rules. This movie <laughs> forgot to take itself out of the It's a Wonderful Life moment. So just 
now the consistent narrative of this movie is like, yeah, we just had three really dickish days. Sorry. Yes, right, right, exactly. They didn't. <laughs> she doesn't wake up out of this universe or anything. Nope, this is real. <laughs> yes, that was the fucking laziest resolution I have ever heard of, and I was alive for Lost. You know, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I guess it, fucking joy to the world is public domain. So that now hashtag wish for Christmas. This worked for God's not dead. Yes. Also make us go viral on the Twitters, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It pops up on the yes. screen like she texted it. She texted just hashtag wish for just the title of the movie. I guess. Yeah. I wanted her friends to text back at that point and be like, what the fuck does that mean? Why'd you just text us a hashtag? You're dumb. What? All right. She gets what text, is that? texted back a dick pic. It's Mr. Smith. Yes. <laughs> also, by the way, I checked that hashtag on actual Twitter and it's so sad. The top results were mostly Alexandra Boylan, who is the founder of Mustard Seed Entertainment. And also the actress who played dumb Rebecca, the not paralegal who got fired. And most of these tweets are just her taking pictures of the DVDs of her terrible movies. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming at like gas stations where she saw them on display. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. It's so, yeah, you said we did Catching Faith. Um, there's a Catching Faith. Faith two, I saw that. I saw that. I'm excited. Catching Faith 2, The Homecoming. We have to watch yep, that. Yep, that's on the list now. Yeah. But my favorite of her tweets under that hashtag is... It was this year. It was a picture of her TV guide screen on her TV. Yes. Showing oh. that Wish for Christmas is playing on AMC from like 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on a Thursday coming up soon. <laughs> Thursday, December so clear 5th. clear your schedule, everybody. <laughs> 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. That's real. All right. So wait, I have an honest question here because because here's the fucked up thing, right? Like, like, Christianity isn't liberalism, mm -mm. right? So, like, what happened when they became atheists is they became more conservative. Yes. Which is the opposite that, that like, opposite direction to the way that that goes. Did this movie ever realize that Christianity wasn't liberalism and, in fact, hates that shit? I think the moment she raised the star into the air, that's when they got it. <laughs> <laughs> shit, oh, fuck, it we gotta look, we gotta end this shit quick. She's about to talk <laughs> about socialized healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, that's gonna do it for our review of Wish for Christmas, but that doesn't mean the episode's done just yet, because we still need to make another hollow promise like Eli did last week. So, Eli, not that you're you know batting a thousand on this or anything, but tell <laughs> us what's on deck. Lovingly, I mean it this time. Okay. This time, I'm, I forgot how often our show is. <laughs> he did. Sorry. He totally I, did. He just came back and he's just like, hey, guys, we're going to have to record on Friday. And we're like, well, fucking yeah, because we only did the one. Obviously, we have to. <laughs> why would we not have to? He's like, oh, okay. Oh, all right. We all. Eli and Donald Trump both know when Hanukkah is equally. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Which is they don't. That's true. And we both invited. Whatever that fucking anti-Semite guy's name. Rick Wiles. <laughs> Robert Jeffress. Yes. Robert Jeffress. I invited him for Hanukkah this year. It's oh, weird. Good. good. <laughs> All right. So with Robert Jeffress at Hanukkah to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 227 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to cut yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptocrat, which are available wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of the Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder and another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. God floated down to homeless Santa Bill Engvall and said, write better jokes. <laughs> that was your sign. Here's your sign. Anna realized later how fucking dumb it was to pass up on that free convertible. Lawyer parents used their legal time reversal powers to get <laughs> Mr. Smith his house back. And a second house for free. Because that's how the law works. 
You can take that legal advice from the podcast. That's right. Yeah. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.